I think it's important to think hard about why Newton initially found it compelling in 1664 that different colours, red to blue, are particles travelling at different speeds. Because what that seemed to offer, and this was surely one of the attractions to him of a roughly Cartesian mechanical account of the world, was that you had a causal explanation of how we see the world. We see the world as coloured because of different measurable mechanical affections, as he would have said. Um, and that was a very powerful model. For example, it allowed first Descartes, then Newton, to explain why different bodies appear to have different colours. Newton spends quite a lot of time in his undergraduate notebook writing more and more about the pores of the surfaces of bodies, the holes in the surfaces of bodies, whose uh, disposition reflects light in different ways. So particles, perhaps of different sizes, perhaps of different shapes, certainly of different speeds, will give us the impression of different colours. And that kind of mechanical reduction is very appealing and extremely compelling for Newton. It doesn't sit too well with the account that he provides in his notebooks from, the 16, from 1665, 1666 onwards, where we don't get very much discussion of the speed at which light particles are moving or the shape and textures of bodies. That's not his concern. So we might want to say, here we have more than one kind of story being told simultaneously about what's happening in the case of light and colour. And that does seem to me to be an absolutely characteristic Newtonian move. That's to say, you have a number of different ways of describing a phenomenon, and some of them give you highly analytical, precise, quantitative measures. That's surely the appeal of the theory of light and colour that he presents eventually to the Royal Society in 16, early 1672, that he's able to say, um, you would not have expected a mathematical theory of colour to be available, and here is such a theory. And the reason you would not have expected it is because for the Aristotelians, after all, mathematics is not proper to the kind of qualitative phenomenon that colour seems to be. Um, so Newton is constantly pressing on the boundaries of the mathematical sciences and the scope of mechanics and mathematical mechanics in particular to show that it's capable of unfolding phenomena you would not have expected it to be able to unfold. He's relatively relaxed when he does this about spelling out what the underlying material reality must be. It's enough, after all, that a mathematical model of great explanatory and predictive power has been developed, which is consistent with the experiments that he produces, and which, in the case of optics and colour, delivers quite practical consequences, or so he argues, in the case of telescope design and the uses of lenses, prisms and mirrors. Now, you can see that in the Principia 20 years later as well. It seems to me that um, the idea that to us it is enough, as he will much later put it, that a mathematical model has been provided, that it is consistent with all the observations and experiments that, of which he's aware, and that it provides this very powerful explanatory model for a series of phenomena we did not expect to be brought under the rule of mathematics. That is more than enough. Um, and he's capable of working with a series of not exactly contradictory, but certainly quite different stories about underlying structure, almost at the same time. Is that unique to Newton? No, it's not. You can see very similar manoeuvres in Descartes too. So Descartes' model of vision and light, as many commentators have pointed out, is made up of a series of apparently contradictory stories about 
the way in which light moves. I mean, for Descartes, for example, it's absolutely fundamental that light moves infinitely fast, yet he's also capable of explaining refraction on the basis of the different speeds at which light particles move. So it's not a, apparently a deeply troubling problem in 17th century natural philosophy to use more than one story about light or matter or colour or chemical phenomena at the same time. Um, explanatory power in that sense is very important.